My name is Magnus Walker. All my life, I have loved cars. I love the way they drive, the way they look, and I love the stories they create. I'm not drawn to flashy new metal. I'm always looking for the classics that excite me, that inspire me, and that someone can afford to own without having to rob a bank. The underdogs. These cars may not be the posters on your wall, but they could be the next big thing. So for me, the ultimate driving machine, I've owned four four-door BMWs, a couple of three series and one 540 of this generation. You know, to me, if I was to go back into uh, the ultimate driving machine, this is probably where I'd want to be. I've got to admit, I've driven this road a lot of times in all types of cars, and I'm actually having a lot of fun here in the M5. Today, we're going to be talking about the BMW M5, specifically the E39 M5. People love these cars. The shape is modern, but not overstyled. It's a classic fast sedan with a throaty, torquey V8 engine. This car belongs to my buddy Paul. He's a good guy with great taste in cars, but he's got some strong opinions about where BMW came from and maybe where the brand is going. When I first moved to California, I didn't have any money and all these rich kids had Porsches and I had a chip on my shoulder about Porsches, right? Because I didn't, I didn't think I was good enough. Right, it was all those guys that looked like they were born into it. They had the 911, so I wasn't going to do a 911. I was going to do a BMW, and this was the big BMW to this have. Was it. This have. was it, and I got it in a very dark metallic blue, and I had it for a couple of years, uh, and then I moved on in life. So sometime, I think it must have been about 2013. I bought this white one. This is, so this was your second M5? Yeah. What made you go back to it? You just missed that experience? I just was looking at the car and thinking about how BMW had strayed in the intervening years. Okay. How over time, to, for me, their products became less interesting, less what I liked. And I thought this was really the sweet spot this of M5s. After this, BMW loses its way. So what are the stats though? It's a V8, right? About 400 horsepower. 400, it was 396 to, okay. be, to be exact. This car probably is doing more like 440. How, how do you get 440? Out? Okay, you, what you do is you go, you have, uh, you have cold air intake boxes, you have flow meters for the air intake, you have a dine-in stage three chip in it, a free flow exhaust, okay. and that gives you the horsepower, and then you top it off with a short throw shifter and a limited slip. So this has all that? You have all that, and, and if, if you ever get an M5, you need exactly each one of those parts. And you'll notice it, uh, when you drive this car, you'll say, this car nails it. So the steering's direct on the car, you know, it still feels analog. There's a little bit of body roll, but I would call minimal body roll. Really, it inspires confidence to put your foot down in the twisters. Get on with the job. The throttle response is super sharp. Just enjoy the drive. I feel like it's clear why someone such as Paul would like this car, or maybe even why I would. But I've seen a lot of younger people buying older BMWs, E30s, E39s, and I'm curious about their appeal. There's a guy named Ryan who dailies his, and maybe he can explain to me what makes the car a must-have for himself. So Ryan, why an M5? Did you have the poster on the wall? How do you end up being an M5 fan? Well, in the 70s they had posters. In 2003 we had BMW films. Let's try again. In BMW folklore, we cannot not talk about the M BMW without talking about the iconic Guy Ritchie, Clive Owen, Madonna film. That's the one where Clive Owen is in the driver's seat, driving Madonna, mostly sideways, through the streets of LA to her gig. That became, I suppose, the first viral car video, and it was a pretty slickly produced car commercial for BMW. Well, we got you here, <laughs> and in good time too. This is the third generation of the M5. Is this a vintage car? 
I would say that it's getting to that point, but at the same time, it's modern enough that um, it's the only car I've ever bought that my wife actually likes. And I see you got the kids seat in the back, right? Oh yeah, we got the Ricardo in there as well. So you, you're hauling the kids around, you're having fun in the canyons. Are you doing long distance drives in this car? I know Alex Roy drove from New York to LA. I, this car was actually in Sedona, Arizona yesterday. Okay, so you drove from so, Sedona, Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long, long way to come and drive the Crest. Yeah, it is. But it, it was is. worth it, right? It was absolutely worth it. It was no problem to hop in the car this morning and drive up here. Tell me what you love about the driving experience of this car. I do know you have other cars. You've got, you've got a Maserati. You've got some type of performance load-ish -ish thing. But tell me what you love about driving the M5 BMW. Um, it's just a freight train. You know, it has so much torque and it's so comfortable that you can cross a great distances very easily and then you can take it out on a road like this and and have a really fun time with it so i see a lot of people and they get into a family car that's great for doing long distance stuff and has plenty of room for the kids but terrible you know it's not fun for me as a dad to drive around yeah. in a cuv or something yeah like this that. sort of covers all the bases i think that it is a lot of fun up here it's actually surprisingly nimble for what i think is almost a four thousand pound car so it's agile it is what I call the executive hooligan car. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. When the wife's not in the car, it's a hooligan car yeah. and it's the executive car when I'm driving to work or taking a long trip. So what does it cost to get into one price point? What is the range from you know, entry level driver quality to, you know, to no mile show quality? Well, what's really interesting and kind of the mantra that I go on is I want a car to look new, but it doesn't have to be low mileage. I've had cars that are 30 years old with 2,000 miles on them. I've had cars that are 30 years old with 400,000 miles on them. Okay. And it's all about condition. How many miles are on this? This car is 136,000 wow. miles on it. And then what is your price range for a car with that many miles in it? Um, a nicely sorted yeah. example like this. I bought this from a surgeon who bought the car brand new, so he had maintained the car very well. Uh, this one in this shape is probably about a $22,000 car okay. in that range. The interior of the uh, E39 M5, I will say, is real clean, uncluttered, user-friendly. Old guys like us, we barely know how to turn on our phone, let alone sync our phone to Apple CarPlay or whatever else it may be. So everything's where it needs to be. You don't need a science degree to figure it out you know it's perfectly placed uh, the, the weight of the controls to me you can heel and toe real easy you can left foot brake real easy you know it's got some sat nav going on there it doesn't seem dated it still seems modern it still seems current which is you know the sign of a timeless classic you know good design never goes out of style you know this is a car that doesn't have too many bells and whistles it's form and function and i like that in a car i like the analog experience and this is sort of the perfect bridge gap between the old and the new i haven't driven the new m5 bmw i'm sure it's super fast but i don't know if it's engaging this car is very very engaging uh rewards smooth input and it's a joy to drive you know it covers all the sensors you know i always like that when you get engaged in a car and this certainly engages you to get out there and drive. So for me, I always talk about, you know, get out and drive and it's all about the journey. And, you know, I'm a big believer in you can have fun in a minivan on your favorite road. The M5 E39 2003 BMW. You can have all that fun with three of your buddies. You can go get a trunk full of groceries. You can drive across country like Alex Roy did. And what's kind of cool about it is it's really sort of under the radar you know it's not this flashy look at me boy racer you know it's a four-door sedan coupe whatever you want to call it and it just seems like a practical way to actually get all you want out of a car without saying hey look at me while i'm doing it and that to me is a real memorable way to put some smiles per mile now, almost 20 years later, this is an affordable classic, classic retro modern vintage, the next big thing.
Thank you.